So I had this sitting on the shelf for a while. It's the Gigatron, the TTL microcomputer. Um, there are some videos about this on the YouTubes. Um, I was trolling around on Tendi looking for a cool computer project, you know, as one does, and uh, came across this spiffy little kit. Really, really clear instructions. Um, I would say a first-time builder could probably go through and assemble this board very easily. Um, Pluggy McPlugface, which is the, the name for the, the game port connection that allows us to connect PS2 keyboard, um, that was a bit more involved. Um, and it's not that it was super complicated, it's that it required some knowledge of using the Arduino IDE, which I think somebody could muddle through if they've never done it before, but it's not entirely the clearest thing in the world. So I feel like they should call it out if you uh, have little to no experience and you wanted to build one of these from scratch. For power supply, I have an Octoprint uh, Raspberry Pi over there, which is providing power for this board. So I have plugged it in. It is running off of basically a computer's USB port, um, and that is providing enough power to run it. And you can see uh, we actually get some cool video output. And so I've got my PS2 keyboard in my lap, uh, and this thing works really well. Let me see if I can get, I can get both in the shot. Like, it's pretty cool. You don't really see a whole lot of output on the device. There's no, like, blinking lights as you're using anything here, but, um, let's do snake. But there's plenty of really detailed videos on what this platform does and how to use it. Uh, I just thought it was going to be a cool little computer project, and it definitely delivered. I think I've told viewers before that I, it's sort of my zen thing, so, like, uh, you know, some alone time, soldering is a bit mindless, I can just kind of set there and glue with metal, as I think someone called it once. So, really peaceful. Um, I'll let that hit the wall. Pretty straightforward. It was not a complicated build. Let me talk about uh, the instructions that are provided with the project. It's worth taking some time to talk about this because you can really tell it's a labor of love. And I'll link the, um, the details for the Tendi page as well as the creator's stuff um, and the GitHub and the website. I love when I order a kit from Tendi um, for something to build, and there's a bomb uh, with a you know account, and you see check boxes like the the person kitting this uh, you know has gone through and they've checked that every single item's in the kit, and then you get to the assembly assembly instructions. I'm not used to this level of detail in assembly instructions on most electronics kits. So um, most of the time, what uh, the most of what I'll have is I'll have a bomb number, so there'll be a bomb number or maybe like a uh, you know, here's an ID, so the PCB IDs, and I'll be like, all right, cool, this is what I could build from. So a lot of times with electronics kits, this might be all you get, and you say, okay, you know, I'm going to take the uh, resettable multi-fuse, and it's going to go in the uh, F1 slot, right? You find the F1, populate it, and so you go through, then you just populate the whole board. Um, this <laughs> is what you get with instructions, and so it's it's page by page, details of how to connect every single component and goes through. I was initially going to go through and I was like, I'm just going to throw all the chips on and solder them. So you see two check boxes and I just gave up. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't necessarily assemble things the way that this, uh, this instruction manual has you do it, but it's interesting. There are about two or three points where he'll have you power it up and then, you know, check that output's working properly before you get to the very end. So it was very interesting. It was a different, different way of assembly than what I'm used to, but I wanted to follow the instructions, you know, just because I didn't want to have, you know, cause myself pain later. Uh, but yeah, that that's really cool. So then let's talk about what what you have to do for this, other than soldering. So for this main board, literally just solder the components. The ROM is pre-programmed, shipped to you instead of a nice little um, anti-static bag. Very easy to put in. Um, the ROM chip and the RAM chip... Uh, the only thing was it was a little hard to get some of the pins set. I think these might be uh, old new stock where they've been desoldered from a board somewhere else. But, you know, putting them on here was, you know, they require aligning the pins a little. So just take your time, be, be patient, and you don't have to do anything crazy. Putting the diodes in was a little fun, too. Um, this is a little different way to mount up a bunch of signal diodes. So let me get my focus to lock there. Uh, so standing them up like that and curving them, I had to take, you know, my... Uh, my needle nose pliers and sort of, you know, bend at 90, then bend again. And I, I think I was kind of consistent. This little dude was a little wider than I would have liked, but generally I was like, yeah, it's fine. So, um, that, that took some time. And of course I, I pegged them in by soldering in the square, um, contact on each one while the board was laying perfectly flat. 
And the same thing with the LEDs. I had the board on my helping hands. The whole entire board was perfectly flat, and I just tacked each one from the top side before flipping it over and then finishing all the uh, all the legs out. Otherwise, it was just going to be a real pain to get those diodes tacked in there in a way that looked attractive. So that's really the only sticking points on that. That was a really cool board design. Uh, very straightforward to build. Let's talk about Pluggy McPlugface. So there's apparently a couple different versions of this. This is like the the, the pro version. It has an SD card uh, and it has a little um, Arduino uh, spark fun. So again, bomb, very easily documented. It was very easy to put this board together, right? Because you've got a, a standard Arduino SD card. Um, oh, that's actually something to mention. So it did ship, the SD card came with a right angle header. And the instructions just simply say, well, you know, if it does, you'll need to desolder that and replace it. That's fine. Um, I have a desoldering iron, but that could be harder if you're a, let me just starting out and you've not got, you know, a nice vacuum desoldering setup. So um, you have to set there a solder wick and pull off that many contacts. If, that, if you're new, that could be, that could be a challenge. So, um, something to keep in mind. And then, uh, yeah, so this, again, follows the same level of instructions. There's not a whole bunch of photos on this. Not like there needs to be. Like I said, it's mostly, if you look at it, it's, you know, it's standoff, mostly already built components, and you're just dropping them on. This was a surface mount reset switch, but that was easy to do. And then these two uh, game ports and the PS2 port. It, it, there's not much to the board. So it, it describes, you know, that. And then, of course, these are the instructions you get for Arduino. And if if you're okay and you used Arduino, this takes you two seconds to do. And it really was that easy. Um, where you could have fun, though, is if you go to uh, the source code that they've got in this location, um, you download, like, there's a tiny font uh, C header file, and there's another C header file for the SD card. You have to know how to put those in the IDE and load those in as libraries um, to get this to work, or just, just open them as files uh, when you're when you're doing your sketch compilation. So if, if you're not used to working with the Arduino IDE, that can be um, hard. Then also having to add the um, uh, SparkFun Pro Mega board into your Arduino IDE. Not complicated. There's plenty of docs out there on it. It just is, again, if you're not familiar with using the IDE, that could be a bit complicated. So this this would be the one spot that could hang somebody up. If you're new and you've never used Arduino before, just prepare to take some time on that. The board assembly itself was very easy. Um, code compiled and ran immediately. Didn't have to do anything crazy. It was it, like knowing how to use Arduino IDE was not complicated with that. So uh, I don't want to hang up on that point. I just want to mention if you're new and you're looking at this kit, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, however, with the main board itself, you don't have to do anything crazy. Uh, the ROM is already burned for you. You don't have to have anything to, to burn the ROM. And then, you know, the RAM chip comes with it and like all the components are there. So you literally, you, you tack everything in place, it boots up first thing. As long as you follow the instructions, which are, again, very detailed. So overall... 10 out of 10. Great kit. Love it. I um, I hope you guys go purchase one and build yourself your own Gigatron.